Today we're going to be visiting the Jezreel Valley. Two sites in particular. Megiddo and Jezreel. We'll spend more time at Megiddo because it's been the better excavated by archaeologists. But when we get to the Bible we'll talk perhaps more about Jezreel. You know where the valley is, don't you? Remember? The Judean hills running like a spine towards the north bending slightly and then fading away into Mount Gilboa and a branch running out towards the sea at Mount Carmel. The Jezreel Valley is to the north of this, that triangular broad flat plain. This model of Iron Age Megiddo in the museum before we enter the site itself gives an idea of the importance of Megiddo as a military installation in the time of the Israelite kings. We'll focus on three areas, the gate complex, the citadel or palace and military complex beside it along with the deep grain silo in front of the gate to the palace and not shown really on this uh, model the huge water supply system. In this helicopter flyover we get a good impression of how broad and flat Tel Megiddo is. You also get a really great impression of just how extensively it's been ex excavated. It's been more completely excavated, at least down to the Iron Age level, than any other site, I think, in Israel. That big trench there goes down to the Bronze Age. We're coming round to the area of the palace complex and the uh, military complex, but we'll spend some time looking at this, that big hole which was a grain silo from the time of Jeroboam the second king of the northern kingdom. This huge tell was of enormous importance for the kings of ancient Israel. The other hole that briefly showed at the top right there is the water complex. You're getting another view of it now and briefly at the end there a view out over the valley Approaching the Bronze Age or Canaanite gate from below gives a really good impression of just how massive ancient gates were, the importance of their construction for the defence of the city. You can see by the size of the people how tall these pillars were. Let's look at the sign and notice how the gates constructed with piers that reach towards each other, forming little rooms, and between these piers there were the actual gates in this case three sets of them. The Iron Age gate is above the Bronze Age gate. and You'll notice some differences about its construction. Firstly that the rooms are deeper and larger. In the Iron Age they were probably used as offices. And also the Iron Age gate uses much sharper cut stone cut to rectangular blocks rather than approximating to size and shape though of course even in the Iron Age cut stone was very expensive and in the bits between the important pillars ordinary field stones were used. The palace and military complex are not very exciting to visit in real life unless you are an archaeologist and can understand the bits of stone lying around. But on the model they and the other public buildings in the foreground there make it really clear that this city existed to sustain and maintain royal power. The citadel was a final place of retreat if the defenders of the city were hard pushed or indeed if the peasants were revolting. Just outside the gate to the palace complex is this huge grain silo from the time of King Jeroboam the second. You can see from the steps leading down into it just how enormous this storage pit was. The grain came from the taxes of the villages around. The water system designed to supply access to the spring in time of siege is another indication of just how important Megiddo was for the kings of Israel. We enter it through this deep pit. You can see the ancient steps going down alongside part of the modern steps. After the pit we come to a square shaft cut into the solid rock. At the bottom of that we enter a 45 degree tunnel downwards. When we've completed our 30 meter descent we enter the long gent 
steeply, gently sloping tunnel which leads to the spring. It's seventy meters long. Eventually we get to where we can see light at the end of the tunnel, and if you look closely at the walls you can see the direction in which the chipping was done as the tunnel was cut, and we discover that they cut from both ends and met somewhere near the middle with only a, a very very small dog leg that's hardly noticeable as you walk along it. An incredible feat of engineering. In ancient times the spring was blocked in by tons of earth and rubble. Today there are steps which enable us to exit the site by this route. Israel, by contrast, though it has been excavated, has much less to excite the interest of the casual visitor. It's also a long, low, flat tell. The views from Tel Jezreel are magnificent. It was a smaller place than Megiddo, and served as a royal palace. That's Mount Gilboa in the background. As I say, the tell has been excavated, but there's less here that we'll look at. we will notice the location because for Ahab that was why his palace was here it was the beauty of the place the water supply and the fertile land around that caused him to make this his new capital <laughs> 